Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi again everyone Today we will continue with the topic of pneumatic actuators So this is the continuation from the previous section where we have so far covered uh, quite a lot in the chapter 13 from the text So from section 13.1 all the way to section 13.8 has uh, these topics were covered uh, either in class or using the videos that was recorded previously so today we will talk about pneumatic actuators where the focus will be on looking at the several different actuators typically used in an, in an industrial pneumatic systems uh, section 13.10 will just be a summary of all the equations used in the chapter so that won't be covered you just need to refer it on your own so pneumatic system make use of actuators in a fashion similar to that of hydraulic systems however because air is the fluid medium rather than hydraulic oil pressures are lower and hence pneumatic actuators are of lighter construction for example, air cylinders make extensive use of aluminium and other non-ferrous alloys to reduce weight, improve heat transfer characteristics, and minimize the corrosive action of air. So the first actuator that we will look at is uh, the pneumatic cylinder. The figure here is uh, shows the internal construction of a typical double-acting pneumatic cylinder. The piston uses wear compensating pressure energized U cup seals. So you can see the seal ceiling here. So the idea is to provide low friction sealing and smooth chatter free movement of this 200 psi pressure rated cylinder. The end plates use rib aluminum alloy to provide strength while minimizing weight and self-aligning seals provide a positive leak-proof cushion with check valve action which reverts to free flow on cylinder reversal. The cushion adjustment which uses a tapered self-locking needle at each end provides positive control over the stroke which can be as large as 20 inches. So these are examples of uh, several different types of pneumatic cylinders and the ANC symbol is shown here. Okay, next is the rotary index table. The, the table is driven by a double acting pneumatic cylinder. The inlet pressure can be adjusted to provide exact force for moving the load and to prevent damage in case of accidental obstructions. A rack and gear drive transmits the straight line motion of the air cylinder to the rotary motion with full power throughout its cycle. Through the use of different cams, the table can be indexed in 90 degrees, 60 degrees, or 15 degrees increment. So it's up to our desired uh, purpose. These are several different examples of uh, available rotary index table. Next are the pneumatic rotary actuators. So in the figure, we can see a pneumatic rotary actuator which is available in five basic models to provide a range of torque outputs from 100 to 10,000 inch pound using 100 psi air. Standard rotations are 94 degrees, 184 degrees and 364 degrees. The cylinder heads at each end serve as positive internal stops for the enclosed floating pistons the linear motion of the piston is modified into rotary motion by a rack and pinion made of hardened steel for durability. So this is uh, an actual uh, picture of the pneumatic rotary actuators taken from the data sheet. This particular rotary actuator is taken from this company's uh, catalog, Flow Talk. So you can see the typical construction and uh, the use the different section or the different types of components of this rotary actuator okay next is the rotary air motor so rotary air motors can be used to provide a smooth source of power 
They are not susceptible to overload damage and can be stalled for long periods without any heat problems. They can be started and stopped very quickly and with pressure regulation and metering of flow can provide infinitely variable torque and speed. Figure 13.43, so this is actually the same uh, model, uh, the air motor com coming from the same company. So the figure shows a vein air motor that contains four vanes and can deliver up to 1.7 horsepower using 100 psi air. The vanes are self-sealing since they take up their own wear, ensuring consistent output over the life of the motor. This self-sealing feature exists because compressed air entering the motor forces the vanes to slide outward in the radial slots of the eccentric mounted rotor. In this way, the outer tips of the vanes maintain contact with the housing cam ring throughout the entire 3000 RPM speed range of the motor. Because of their cool running operation, these air motors can be used in ambient temperatures up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Typical applications for this air motor include mixing equipment, conveyor drive, food packaging, hoist, tension devices and turntable. Okay, in this figure, you can see the performance curves of the motor shown earlier. The performance curves are shown in both English and metric units. And these performance curves which are given at five different pressure levels are determined by actual test data. So the performance curves are plotted uh, in the x-axis speed and the y-axis air consumption rate, torque and power. So the top three are the imperial using the imperial units and the bottom three use the metric units. So the performance curves which are given at five different pressure levels are determined by actual test data. Observe that output power increases with either speed or pressure. So the output power here will increase with either speed or pressure. You can see as shown here. Note that the torque also increases with pressure, however, the torque versus speed curves exhibit a different characteristic. At the given pressure level, torque increases with speed from zero speed to about 250 RPM. So you can see they are increasing here to up to 250 RPM and then it starts to go down okay, in both curves. Also observe that the starting torque is lower than the running torque over most of the speed range. As a result, higher inlet pressure may be required to start driving a large load torque. You can see these are not zero, okay? Because you need a certain amount of torque to start the motor moving. Finally, note that air consumption rate increases with either speed or pressure. For example, with 100 PSI air and a maximum operating speed of 3000 RPM, the motor consumption rate equals to, in this case, 100 and about 130 uh, CFM of free air. Okay, the next um, rotational motor is the radial piston air rotor. This five cylinder piston design provides even torque at all speeds due to overlap of the five power impulses occurring during each revolution of the motor. So in the text it mentioned five impulses. So over here we just have three piston, so maybe a slightly different motor. At least two pistons are on the power throw at all times. The smooth overlapping power flow and accurate balancing make these motors vibrationless at all speed. This smooth operation is especially noticeable at low speeds when the flywheel action is negligible. This air motor has relatively little exhaust noise and this can be further reduced by use of an exhaust muffler. It is suitable for continuous operation using 100 psi air pressure and can deliver up to 15 horsepower. Okay, in the next slide here, you can see axial piston air rotor. So you, from the previous slide, you can see that the piston are located at a perpendicular distance with the, with the shaft. This is, these are the pistons, they are perpendicular to the shaft. For this one, the axial piston, uh, the piston uh, 
placed in parallel with the shaft. So this one, this type of motor can deliver up to 3 horsepower using 100 psi air. The power pulses for this 5 piston axial design motors are the same as those for the radial piston design. At least 2 pistons are on the power stroke at all times providing even torque at all speeds. In general, if you, uh, if you require a motor that has higher torque, then you would choose the previous one which is this one, radial pistons. But if, you, uh, if your application requires higher speed, less torque, then this is the one to choose from. Okay, next are the air requirements of pneumatic actuators. So let's look at how much air is required for uh, pneumatic actuators. How, how, what kind of flow is needed for these uh, pneumatic actuators. Pneumatic actuators are used to drive a, vari a variety of power tools for performing useful work. The air requirements of these tools in terms of flow rate and pressure depend on the application involved. You can see it from this figure here, uh, where the air flow requirements in SCFM and standard cubic meter per minute for a number of every size pneumatic tools designed to operate at a nominal pressure of 100 psi gauge. So if you can see these two, this these are the on the right here is a actual uh, chart for different types of uh, tools, and the thing is you need to look at that this CFM requirement. There's the Q, the there's the flow rate of air. This is CFM, whereas in the text it uses SCFM. So the the CFM you can see is it's lower than the SCFM because these are the flow at a pressure of 90 psi, whereas SCFM are the flow of this of the air at the standard uh, at the absolute atmospheric pressure. Okay, finally for today is uh, just a simple example to show how we can calculate the air consumption rate for a pneumatic tool. So in example 13.12, single acting pneumatic cylinder with a 1.75 inch piston diameter and 6 inches stroke drives a power tool using 100 psig air at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If the cylinder reciprocates at 30 cycles per minute, determine the air consumption rate. So we just need to find uh, for this particular cylinder how much air is required from the atmosphere so actually we have done a similar example in the previous video but just to uh, review in this particular example so we have the flow flow rate uh, requirement of this two uh, and the flow rate is just simply the volume times the reciprocation rate so the volume can be found from these uh, parameters given here volume is just the area times the stroke length and the reciprocation rate are given here so you can calculate it easily to, to be 0 0.251 cubic feet per minute the only thing is you need to convert these inches to feet so if you do the conversion properly then you will get this answer so next we can use this equa the, the equation 13.7 where uh, we have shown before. This is the equation uh, modified from the uh, general gas law. Yeah, instead of the volume, we use the we divide the volume by the time to obtain the flow, and we can rearrange to be the subscript one representing the air at atmospheric pressure and two at the system. So if you use the information given, remember the values has to be in the absolute value. So you can find the pressure as given in the question and the temperature all converted to the absolute values. And you can calculate the um, air consumption rate to be 1.91 standard cubic feet per minute. Okay, so that's all for today. And I suppose that will be the end of this series of lecture uh, related to pneumatics. 
the next chapter will talk about uh, pneumatic circuits which most most likely we which supposed to be done in the lab so we will see how the movement control order will be will be decided whether it's going to be continued or not so until then thank you very much for watching see you next time wish you all all the best and in good health assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh